morning. Good morning. That's very good. A happy Father's Day to all the men who are uh, in attendance this morning as we gather together on Father's Day. And if you see me after church, you'll get these fancy dancy chocolate mustaches. <laughs> They're Anna Green Gables mustaches. I've never known Anna Green Gables to wear a mustache, but they're Anna Green Gables chocolate mustaches. So uh, if you see me at the door, you get a treat. And you'll be all set. Uh, we want to welcome you as we worship together this morning. A special welcome to those who are uh, watching at home through Facebook and YouTube. We thank you for joining us as we worship together here at Central Parish. Uh, just a few announcements. I'm going to try to get through them as quickly as possible. Please read your bulletin. There are a lot of announcements in there. Um, elders are asked to note there is a session meeting this Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock at Canoe Cove Church. Uh, so please note that, elders, uh, Wednesday, 7 o'clock at Canoe Cove Church. Youth group, our final youth group for the summer before summer break will take place this Friday evening, uh, 6.30 here at Clyde River Church. Hopefully the weather will... Uh, will cooperate with us and we'll be doing a lot of outdoor activities, water balloon fights, etc. Uh, so that'll be taking place uh, this Friday evening here at Clyde River at 6.30. Uh, camp Pier News, uh, there is a camp cleanup, one last Camp Pier cleanup scheduled for this upcoming Saturday and that's starting at 9 o'clock in the morning and then next Sunday afternoon at 4 is the commissioning service for our Camp Pier staff uh, for this new upcoming 2023 camping season so that takes place at 4 p.m. and all are welcome to attend that. Uh, Churchill Church Cemetery Committee, uh, there is going to be a yard maintenance and painting night tomorrow evening starting at 5 o'clock. The rain date is the following evening, the 20th, also at 5 o'clock. So if you're able to help out, it would be greatly appreciated. Next Sunday here in Clyde River is our Sunday School closing as well as uh, we will be honoring our graduates from high school, university, uh, and from colleges. So if you do have names, please pass them along to me uh, so that they can be recognized next Sunday. Uh, next Sunday, we'll also be doing a little barbecue and a social time following the service uh, as we usually do with our Sunday school closing. So uh, please note that. Um, the other announcements are there in your bulletin. Uh, please note them and uh, draw them to your attention, especially donations to the Cornwall Food Bank and also to the homeless shelter in Charlottetown, in particular kit bags and duffel bags, new or gently used. Uh, they are looking for them, so we're hoping to have a few to take into them uh, after next week, so please note that. Um, those are the announcements. We'll join together now with our call to worship. <clears throat> Holy and generous is God, the creator of all things. Loving and gracious is Christ, the bearer of healing and hope. Gentle and wise is the Holy Spirit, the breath of new life. Trinity of grace, we call on you today. Come and worship the God who made us, uh, who made us and loves us all. We love and enjoy the praise of all Let's join together now. Let us pray. Wondrous and eternal God, we thank you for the gift that you have given to us in your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the world that you have made, and we thank you for our part in it. We ask, O oh God, now that you will guide and lead us in this time of worship that it will be a time of joy and celebration, that we will continue to seek after the things of your kingdom, and that we will indeed glorify your name. We thank you that in and through Jesus Christ, you show us how much you love your creation and how much you love each one of us. Help us to live that love out in what we do and say. Be with us as we continue to worship and to glorify your name this day. Abide with us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to join together now as we sing our opening hymn of praise, number nine. Glory, glorify thy name, number nine.
for the children's time now. How is everyone today? So you have it in a knot. Does that mean something could escape on me? No? You're shaking your head, Luke. No? So this is one thing your dad would like and one thing your dad would not like. Do you think I'll be able to tell them apart? I might be. I might be? Yeah. I'm a little unsure. Let's see what it is. Oh. Oh. I'm hoping this is a not like <laughs> New York Yankees. <laughs> Why would you not like the Yankees? The New York Yankees, not Americans in general. So, just want to be clear. So, why would you not like the Yankees? Nobody knows. They're, well, they like to think they're really good. They like to spend lots of money to make sure they're good. And who is your dad's team? The Blue Jays. So, would that tell us why he wouldn't like the Yankees? Because they're in the same what? They're in the same division. And what happens to the Blue Jays when they play the Yankees? A lot of times they lose. Yeah, it's a very sad time. So you're not a Yankees fan, are you, Luke? Are you, Catherine? Anyone here a Yankees fan? We're watching. You look a little confused over here in this corner. So, uh, Yankees. So this is something he doesn't like. So do you think he would like a New York Yankees ball cap? Nope. You think he wears? Nope. nope. <laughs> Not even if you gave it to him as, you, as his children. No, nope, still wouldn't wear it. <laughs> All right, now this is obviously something he would like. Are you sure it's something he would like? Did you ask him? No. <laughs> what is it? <coughs> oh, Henry Bar. How do you like an old Henry Bar? Do you like Mars bars? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not? Just not the best. What kind of bars do you like? Oh, Mars bars. You like Mars bars? Who likes Oh Henry bars? Oh, yes. <laughs> Who likes Mars bars? Very good. Lots of audience participation today. It's great. So, Oh Henry bars. Why does he like Oh Henry bars? Is that his favorite bar? It's not his favorite bar? What's his favorite bar? A, oh. <laughs> bounty bar. How many of you like bounty bars? You know what's in bounty bars? Coconut. <laughs> Eating little worms. <laughs> Now, I like O. Henry Bars. O. Henry Bars are tasty. Uh, and you know what? It's a lot of different things in it. It has crunchy peanuts, chewy fudge, creamy caramel, covered in a chocolatey coating. Sounds delicious, actually. Sounds very yummy, doesn't it? Now, would you give him this as a Father's Day present? Is this his Father's Day present? <laughs> okay. So, you want to give your dad something that they would what? like and appreciate. You wouldn't want to give them something that they wouldn't like, because what would they do? They what? They throw it in the garbage. Not burn it. Not use it. Burn it. Okay, burn it. We're going a little street now, but hopefully uh, probably they probably would you think they would still like it? They say they like it. They say they like it. They're <laughs> spoken like somebody who has had that happen. They would say that they would like. Why would they say they'd like it? Ah, so they don't hurt your feelings. Because they would like anything that you gave them. Because it comes from who? It comes from you. It comes from their kids. And that's important. Because that reminds us that they love us. And they care for us. No matter what gift it might be. Even if it's a New York Yankee hat. No? Still not a Yankee hat. But that's the thing. And it's the same way with God. God loves us, and he wants the very best for us, and he will always be there for us. He may not always be happy with the choices that we make or the decisions that we make, 
But he is always there to love us, and he will be always there to welcome us home. That's what we're going to talk about a little bit later today upstairs in church, is wel God welcoming us home. And that's the important thing to remember, that God is always there to welcome us home, to welcome us back into his presence, and that he loves us because he created us, and he watches over us, and he walks with us, and he doesn't leave us alone. So let's bow in a moment of prayer. I want you to repeat after me. Loving God, we thank you for the men in our lives who have made a difference and have shown us your love and your care. Thank you for being with us, for watching over us and protecting us. We thank you for your love that knows no limits and knows no bounds. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, well, you can take that home and stick it on the fridge. No, I don't want it because I'm not a Yankees fan either. You want to feel Henry Bear? Are you going to give it to your dad? Or are you going to eat it? Is he, is he going to eat it? He's going to eat it. Yeah. I should have given it to you. I'll give you the Yankee picture. That would be lovely. All right, next week. I need... Um, I need... Josie, I need you to bring me something that is... Something from your house. One thing that is hard... And one thing that is soft, hard and soft. All right, all right. Uh, so I think I think I'm going to go downstairs. Uh, so Sunday school kids who aren't joining the church, you can head downstairs to Sunday school. Sunday school kids who are joining the church, you can stay right here because now I'm going to invite everyone who's joining the church by profession of faith, not a transfer of membership, but by profession of faith to come forward. <clears throat> Okay, sort of stand there, and I'm not going to be able to get it. Okay, hello again. <laughs> We're going to join together now uh, as a profession of faith. As we talked about in membership class, this is their taking on or affirming the vows that have been made on their behalf by their parents. This is them making their faith their own. This is part of what we hold as Presbyterians the importance of indeed taking our faith, making it our own, and living and growing and deepening and developing that faith. Christian friends, Matt, Marley, Ben, Cassie, Emma, Allie, Anna, Jesse, Montgomery, and Sadie, say that five times fast, <laughs> have been baptized and are members of the body of Christ. They have been nurtured within the Christian community, instructed in the belief and practice of the church. In making public profession of their faith, they desire to affirm their baptism and to claim the rights and responsibilities associated with membership in the congregation of Burnside Presbyterian Church. Remember your baptism and give thanks. By the waters of baptism and the power of the Holy Spirit, God claims us and calls each one of us by name. God unites us into Christ in his death and resurrection and grasps us into the body of Christ as members of the church. Matt, Marley, Ben, Cassie, Emma, Allie, Anna, Jesse, Sadie, and Montgomery, you stand before God and this company of God's people to affirm the covenant of God's grace, the covenant that he made with you at your baptism to acknowledge your growth in grace and to assume responsibility as a disciple of Jesus Christ in this congregation and the world. And so I ask you, are you ready to make public your profession of faith? If you are, please state, I am ready. I ask you the following questions of faith. And these are questions that would have been asked at your baptism. And now these questions are yours to answer and yours alone. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God who has been faithful to us in all generations, do you turn away from sin, renounce evil and all powers in the world which rebel against God, which rebel against God or oppose God's rule of justice and love? Yes, yes or I do will be fine. 
Do you renounce the ways of sin which separates you from the love of God? Do you turn to Jesus Christ, accepting him as Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and his love for you? Do you desire independence from the Holy Spirit to mature as a Christian in the church, to seek the guidance of Christ as you listen for his word, to celebrate his death and life at the table he provides, and to engage in his mission to the world? Now, if this was a baptism, uh, we would have you as the congregation to stand. And I would ask you a question asking that you would continue to pray for, to guide, and to nurture uh, the child or the children who are baptized. Today, this is a fulfillment of the vows you made long ago. These are your examples of prayer prayed over and for each one of them that they would come to an understanding of the faith and make that faith their own. This is why it's so important and why I encourage during baptism, why we stand and we recognize those who are receiving the gift of baptism. Because it is our call as brothers and sisters in Christ to nurture, to care, and to pray for those around us. This is the answer to those prayers. Let's turn to God. Let us pray. Blessed are you, most gracious God, for you have given to us the gift of baptism. Through water and the Spirit, you have claimed us as your own, cleansing us from sin and giving us new life. You called us into your church to be your servants in the world, in the name of Jesus Christ. You promised to, present, uh, to be present amongst us as your people, to direct and to defend your people by the power of your Holy Spirit. And now we give you thanks for your faithfulness to us and to these, your children, who come to renew with you the covenant of their baptism. By the power of your Spirit, continue in them the good work that you have begun, that they may willingly serve you in love and joy, with courage and truth. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Matt, Marley, Ben, Cassie, Emma, Allie, Anna. Jesse, Montgomery, and Sadie, children of God, may you live and walk in the Spirit, increasing daily in the gifts of love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, as one who belongs to Christ Jesus, our Lord. At this time, we also recognize those who are joining the church by transfer of membership. Within the Presbyterian Church, we hold that we make profession of faith, or we also transfer uh, our membership. And so at this time, I'm going to call uh, forward those who are joining by transfer of membership, Shirley Lang, Betty Campbell, Bill Murley, and Debbie Murley. Come on down. It's like the price is right. Try to find room in here. And I am going to ask after the service that you all stick around, all who are joining, so that we can take a group picture up front. Uh, so, just an FYI. Let's ask God's blessing upon each one. Let us pray. Wondrous God, we thank you for the gifts that you have given to us. We thank you for the opportunity to be part of your church. We thank you for the grace you have poured out upon us as followers of Christ. And we ask, O oh God, now that you be with each one gathered here this morning, who joined by profession of faith, who joined by transfer of membership. May you use them mightily to proclaim the good news of Christ through this, your people, here at Burnside Church. Continue to be our strength, our hope, our rock, and our shield. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, I'm going to ask the elders to come forward as we extend the right hand of fellowship, and, or fist bump, or whatever, it's COVID stuff. So I'm going this way. Elders, come on down. And I'm going to start this way and work my way that way.
takes wet. <laughs> Congratulations to everyone who has joined us today. And so some of you can head back to your seats, some of you can head downstairs to Sunday school, and some of us will have to get back behind the pulpit now. <laughs> together now as we share with, uh, with one another, as we share as the people of God, the gifts that he has given to us through his word. As we prepare to receive God's word, let's turn to him in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, amid the distractions of our times, give us undivided hearts and attentive minds. Help us to discern your wisdom in the scriptures so that we may follow Christ, who is the living word. Help us to live your word amongst us, to live your word in the life that we live, so that the love of Christ and the light that he offers the world may be seen through everything that we do. Abide with us now, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our responsive reading is taken from Psalm 116, verses 12 through 19. Let us share responsibly. How can I repay the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will take God's salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows unto the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious is the sight of the Lord, is the death of his O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice the thing offered to you in all of the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the glory of the heavens of the Lord, in the midst of all Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Oh, yes. Our, you can tell it's one of those days for me. Uh, our next reading is taken from Luke uh, chapter 15. And this is a parable that we know very well. We're reading the first part of this parable as, Luke, as Jesus shares it with us. Luke chapter 15. Jesus continued. There was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had, set off for a distant country, and there squandered his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he, had came, when he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare, and here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him, was filled with compassion for him, ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let us have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. 
So they began to separate. Amen. And may God's word speak to our hearts and minds this day. We're now going to praise God together as we sing uh, the hymn number 681. In his time. Because if they flew over the bay, they would be called bagels. <laughs> See where I'm going with this? It's going to be good. <laughs> My wife and I had a huge argument about who will do the laundry. Eventually, I folded. <laughs> For my birthday, my children gave me an alarm clock that sweared at me instead of buzzing. It was quite a rude awakening. <laughs> and it would be something my children might actually do. A locksmith had to go to court to give evidence last week. Apparently, he was the key witness. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I went to a psychic. I knocked on her front door. She yelled, who is it? So I left. <laughs> it took me a couple of seconds to get out of But then I got it and I said, yeah, that's good. And finally, uh, the last one. I hired a handyman and gave him a list. When I got back home, he only did number one, three, and five. Turns out, he only does odd jobs. <laughs> that was by far my favorite. <laughs> I was getting better as I went along there. <laughs> we celebrate Father's Day. We celebrate the men in our lives. We celebrate the men who have made a difference. Be it father, grandfather, uncle, neighbor, perhaps it's a coach that we've had. Men who have made a difference. Men who have made an impact. And that's what we are called to do and to celebrate this Father's Day. Father's Day is often a uh, tricky day to celebrate because there are people for whom Father's Day is a difficult day. Perhaps it's difficult because they just recently lost their own father. 
Perhaps they had a difficult relationship with their father. And that affects how they see God as our Heavenly Father. And so this morning we're going to look briefly at one of the, if not the most famous parables that Jesus shared. Last week we looked at the parable of the Good Samaritan. This week we're looking at the parable of what is commonly known as the prodigal son. But in reality, it's actually the parable of the lost so, if we go back into uh, chapter 15, to the beginning of the chapter, we see that Jesus is actually speaking to and teaching and sharing with uh, sinners and tax collectors. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law were there, and they were muttering. They said, why would Jesus waste his time with these people? Why would Jesus hang out with them? And then Jesus began by sharing uh, the first of three parables. The parable of the lost sheep, then the parable of the lost coin, and then finally the parable of the lost son that we share part of today. The other part's going to be coming next week. But in this parable, we see an interesting story taking place. Because it was set in the time of Christ, and a lot of what was done there would have set his listeners back by what they were hearing. Now, it wasn't unusual for a father to decide to give his inheritance to his children, even if he was still alive. If he was retiring, if he was taking a step back, he would divide the inheritance with the children. And in Jesus' time, the, the inheritance went two-thirds to the oldest son, one-third to the second son, and then if there were any children after that, it would be up to the eldest son to care for them. In this parable, we know there's only two sons, and so the division would be two-thirds, one-third. What was unusual about this is that it was the youngest son who requested it. He went to the father and asked for his inheritance. And in doing so, what he was saying to his father was, I want your money more than I want you. I care for your money more than I care for you. You can only imagine what it would have been like to have been that father. The pain that would have been upon his heart the pain that was coming, knowing that his son wanted the money, knowing full well that he would take it and leave. It would have been a difficult time for the father. He probably would have thought back to when his child was younger. The lessons that he shared, the laughter that they had, the tears that were shed, the time spent teaching him of what was important and what wasn't. And now to see him make this choice had to hurt the father. It was a poor choice. It was a silly choice. It was a choice that perhaps a teenager would make. And yet what's interesting here is that the father doesn't stop the son. As much as he loves him, as much as he cares for him, he let him make his own choice, his own decision. Even though it probably would have torn the father to pieces. The son took the money, packed his bags, and headed off to a far off country. He couldn't get away far enough and fast enough. And it's amazing. How many people in PEI think that way? Especially when you're in that teenage years. Oh, I can't wait to leave the island. There's nothing for me here. Things are better in Ontario or in the States or in the West. It's also amazing how many people, given the option and the opportunity, will come back to PEI. Because it only has to be, you only have to be away for a little while to realize some of the blessings that are there. 
this younger son went away. He thought he had it all. He had money, he had friends, he had power, he had influence, until the money disappeared. And when the money left, the friends left, the power left, the influence left. And he was left in a foreign country with nobody who cared for him and a famine. Scripture tells us, Jesus said in the parable, that he went to work for somebody in that country. He went to work feeding the pigs. You want rock bottom? You think that's rock bottom. But it gets worse. Because then Jesus says, not only was he feeding the pigs, not only was he making himself unclean by dealing with swine, which are unclean animals, he actually wanted what the pigs were eating. He wanted pods. He wanted the pea pods that the pigs were eating. That's how hungry he was. That would be like me wanting to eat a mound bar. It just wouldn't happen. Or I'd have to be really desperate for it to happen. And that's how desperate he was. That's how desperate he was to have something to eat. And it was in the midst of that desperation, it's in the midst of that bottom of that feeling of nothing could be worse than this, that he realized what he had left at home. He realized that his father's servants were better off than he was. That his father cared for his servants better than anyone cared for him. And so he made the decision, I'm heading home. I'm heading home, I'm heading back to my father. I'm heading back not to be a son, but to be a hired servant. And so he practiced what he was going to say. He practiced on the journey back home what he was going to say. And I can relate to what this young son was going to. It was probably about two weeks, three weeks from around now, back in 1990. It's a good year back in 1990. I graduated from Bluefield. My parents gave me, a, well, I'm going to say a car. It was a Chevy Chevette. <laughs> it, it was good. Uh, no question about it. And I got it for graduation. And it lasted all of about three weeks. <laughs> I was going uh, around a turn over in New Dominion. And let's say I flipped the car. That was my first introduction to the North River Fire Department at that point in time. <laughs> Who would have known then? But it was interesting because that ambulance drive from New Dominion to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital was in some ways the longest, but also the shortest drive in my life. Because I knew I was probably going to be in a little bit of trouble. And so I was practicing what I would say to mom and dad, and I was preparing myself, but at the end of the day, it wasn't as bad as I thought. Much like the younger son, I was preparing for what I needed to say. And at the end of the day, like the son in this parable, he was greeted by love and concern and compassion. And we need to remember that. We need to remember that as parents, as fathers, as grandfathers, that our children, well, they're going to mess up in the very same way that you mess up. And we need to be there for them, to stand with them, to stand beside them, and to know, let them know that they are loved and cared for. To let them know that we are with them no matter what the situation or scenario. To, that we will be with them no matter what they say to us, no matter what they tell us, that we will not leave them. Because this son in the parable realized that he was by himself. And I can only imagine what that would be like. To know that there was nobody there for him. Or to at least have that feeling that there was nobody there for him. We 
We need to be the people for them. We need to be the people that they can rely on, the people that they know will be with them, even if everyone else turns away from them. We need to be that for them. We need to be Christ for them. And we need to show and share what it means to be a follower of Christ to them. Because all too often, people are left alone. People turn away from instead of stand with. This young man made the trip back home. Just like I made the trip in the ambulance. And again, wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Mom and dad were clearly happier that I was alive uh, than not. And they said, cars can be replaced. This one wasn't replaced. <laughs> but the knowledge was there. And it was a good reminder to me that I was more important to them than anything else. And we need to be reminded of that. And we need to be reminded of that as followers of Christ, that Christ is there for us. That Christ isn't going to walk away from us. And that's the wonderful part of this parable. The son's on his way home, and as he makes his way home, he doesn't even get close to when the father sees him. The father has been watching for him. The father has been wondering if he's going to come home. And when he sees him, he runs to the son. He runs to him, hugs him, kisses him. He doesn't care what it looks like. He doesn't care what people think. He doesn't care that his son has wronged him, has hurt him, because his son is now home. That is the depths of God's love for us. That is the depths of God's love for us seen in his son, Jesus Christ. That he is not going to stop looking for us. That he is not going to give up on us. And that he will see us, perhaps before we even notice him, as being there. This is a powerful parable that shows us what our Heavenly Father is like. That He is there even in those moments where we do not see. That He does not give up on us. And that His compassion and love for us knows no limits. And as the men of this congregation, that's my challenge to you. To live up to that as best you can. To be there, even when your children or your grandchildren or your neighbors or your niece or nephew may not appear that they want you, that they may push you aside, be there because you are needed. I'm going to share a clip now that's a reminder of us staying, even when our children may not appreciate it that much. Good job, Lauren. Okay, I got it. Dad. Okay, don't forget to carry the one. Dad. Okay. That was delicious. Thank you. Right, hold on there, kiddo. Dad. Say cheese. There you go. Okay, just one more. Hold your trophy up a little bit higher. Dad! Good morning, good morning, good morning! It's time to rise and shine. Mm, Dad! I love it! Um, no. Dad! Dad! And they were here first. So Dad! We... So you want to go catch a movie at like 7.30 or something? <sighs> Dad! And one more. Okay, one more. Okay, let's go. Wait, wait, wait. Come on. Just one more. One more. Dad!
I'm so proud of you. Now you just gotta get a job. Dad! You look beautiful. Oh, Dad. Uh, and stand just a little closer together and move just a little bit to the left, uh, my left, uh, a little more. Dad! giving them an example of what it is to follow our Heavenly Father. Be that positive example for them. Be the one who is waiting for them, encouraging them, going to them in those moments where they need you the most. Be the light of Christ and celebrate the gift of fathers, of men who have made a difference for you and take time to say thank you this day. Let's join together. Let us pray. <laughs> Gracious God, we thank you that we can indeed come into your presence, that we can celebrate the men who have made a difference for us, those men who have loved us, who have cared us, who have not been afraid to show how much they care, those men who have stood beside us when we have felt alone. Those men who have shown us that we matter when we may not have felt we matter to anyone including ourselves. Help us, O oh God, to share and to show the world the love of our Heavenly Father, the love of the one who calls us by name, the one who has given to us the gift of Jesus Christ. May we shine the light of Christ May we be the hands and feet of Christ in the world. Help us, O oh God, to find strength in you. May we indeed be touched by your amazing grace and love. We thank you that you know us so very well and that you continue to be our God. Continue to guide us as your church proclaim the good news of Christ the truth that found in Christ and him alone. Help us to share this good news, not in ways that merely please people or don't ruffle feathers, but in ways that bring Christ's reconciling love to divided communities and lives out of joint with each other. Shine your light into the world's hidden corners, exposing violence, exploitation, and bigotry. Reveal what dehumanizes and help us to realize that we are your children, created in your image. We ask, O oh God, for your continued hand to be upon us this day, that we might continue to share and show the love of Christ, that we will be touched by your grace, that we will hear the words of Scripture once again and remind ourselves that it speaks to us in ways both new and dynamic, in ways that it has spoken to people of long ago. Help us, O oh God, to share your word, to bring your word, and to be your word in the world around us today. Abide with us now, we ask, in Jesus' name. Amen. I split the parable in two, in part because, as any dad knows, this parable where I ended it, it looked like things were going well. You just had one son back under control. Well, next week, 
as all dads can speak. If you have more than one child, you just get one settled, and then another one acts up. Next week, we're going to be looking at the other son. We're going to join now together as we present to God our tithes and offerings. We're going to invite you to stand as we sing together the doxology. Touching lives in need with your love and strength in Jesus. Help us, O oh God, to use not only these gifts but ourselves, so that the name of Christ might be shared and shown and lived. Not only here, but across this island, across this country, and across this world. Abide with us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is number 589, I the Lord of Sea and Sky, number 589. <laughs> Thank you. 
May we go out in the world to be the light of Christ. May we go from here celebrating the men in our lives who have made such a difference. And may we go from here celebrating the gift of our Heavenly Father, the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ, and the gift of the Holy Spirit who unites us and draws us together. May we go from here in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God who loves us both now and forevermore. Thank you.